Hello, this is MechaJ101, and this is my latest creation. It is a temperature controller. Basically, what you'd use it for is um, you'd plug in a heating element and a thermocouple, and it would um, you could set the temperature to whatever you want, and it would turn the whatever you have plugged in here on and off to keep it at that temperature. So you could, um, and it works really well, actually, and I'm quite proud of it. It looks very nice. It's in a nice um, big... Uh, computer power supply box. Um, I had to add some um, extra metal down here because there was a little slot there where the um, outputs came out. And so it looks really nice inside. I'll open it up in a minute. Here we've got the um, power in. And then we have our thermocouple power out and the readout. And it's all in a nice package there. So I'll just um, plug it in here. And so we've got power to it and there the readout is on and it is set for 99 degrees Fahrenheit right now but what we'll do is we'll plug in a thermocouple from this um, skillet which actually I found it um, half buried in a creek but I um, kind of polished it up on the inside and because the handle was broken off and all that stuff was rusted terribly I um, redid that and add a thermocouple to the bottom so I can um, regulate the temperature. So here's our thermocouple plug. We'll plug that in there. And there we can see that it's actually 82 degrees, 81 degrees Fahrenheit, because I was just playing with it a little bit. So we'll plug it in. Whoops, got zapped there a little bit. <laughs> ah, it's hard to do with one hand. But um, So now it's going to heat it up. See the li little light down here is on. Now it's off. And it's going to regulate it at about that temperature. So it's set at 99. So now it's waiting for it to drop down a little bit. And it's actually, this module seems really smart. It um, seems to, if if you turn the temperature down, it actually, as the temperature is falling, it will start, as it starts getting close, it'll start pulsing on and off a little bit to um, kind of keep it from going way under the temperature because it's kind of predicting how large the, the um, whatever your um, heat mass is. So it seems really smart. And there's actually a couple other adjustments. It takes a lot of fiddling with those two knobs to get it to um, work properly because the reset kind of seems to be when it actually, or what what point it actually turns on and off when it's starting to get close to that temperature. And then the bandwidth is how long the um, pulse is on. And then there's some other dip switches and things inside of it that you can adjust to get different settings. But inside there's basically just a um, large solid state relay that I got and it works really good. So I will take it apart here and show you guys. Alright, here is the inside and I'm quite proud of how nice it looks in here. It's nice and neat. I've got wire ties or um, zip ties on all the wires so it's all neat and I think it probably quali or it probably would be um, it's probably pretty safe. I've got everything grounded, so I've got a nice grounding wire here going to the grounding loom. And I've got heat shrink tubing over um, the connections down there to the plug. And I've got big solid state relay or contactor. Um, it's probably just a big triac. Um, but, and then here we have the um, outlet. And over there we have the thermocouple plug. And I actually used a lot of solder on when I was building this because the um, when I cut the uh, the frame out here, there was a little um, tab like this, and it um, I had to solder a little piece on there to strengthen it. And then over here, where the grill is in between them, in between the outlet and the um, the controller, it's kind of thin there, and it was really weak. So I had to add this um, other piece here. I soldered that on the back and that strengthened it up a good bit so now it's nice and rigid there and then I had to solder this um, little L piece on here because there was a gap here from the main circuit board that used to be in here so I had to solder that on there and then for the contactor it's um, designed to be rail mounted so I made this little piece of metal here bent it up and made a kind of rail 
and I soldered that on there, so it's it shouldn't be going anywhere, I don't think. I mean, if you drop it on the ground, it's going to break off, but, I mean, this would probably break off too, <laughs> because it's just kind of attached with these um, little um, screw here that tightens this against the frame, so it's not actually that secure, but I guess it works. <laughs> so that's why I had to add this, because it's just... Um, connected it's all the weight is kind of pushing on there so it's it wasn't very strong before or sturdy but um it's all good now so so yeah um but these these modules seem like they're awfully expensive and good quality um on ebay i was looking at looking at the same or similar models of these and they go for like i don't know at least a hundred dollars for these things but um i guess they're good quality so but yeah and there's actually a whole bunch of different um, varieties of these. Some of them have relays and things. That's why I X those out because this um, version doesn't have the relays. It only has the output for a solid state relay. Basically, it's just 20 milliamps, um, 20 volts is the output. So that's why I used this, and I got all, both these things for free. So um, all from my dad's work. Um, but yeah, so pretty nice unit I really like it so so yeah I think it probably would pass um, safety inspections and things the only thing it's lacking is a fuse I thought about putting a like just a normal little fuse holder um, like uh, like uh, like one of these in it but I didn't really think well most of these can't even handle um, 15 amps they're rated for like 10 amps or something like that, so I didn't really think that would, um, because I might want to run something that does 15 amps, so I figured that, um, I didn't really need it, and I believe there's a fuse inside here, so that part doesn't need it, so I think we're all good, I think, because this is 30 amps, so I mean, it's not going to really blow up anytime soon, <laughs> it would trip the breaker, I imagine, if anything, so probably the lowest rated thing um, that the current passes through is the outlet, which is probably a 20 or 15 amp outlet. So, <laughs> yeah. But um, that's that's the inside of it, and um, yeah, I like it a lot. It's got a nice cover that fits on there, and everything. So, let's just give it a little test. All right, so here it is working. It's actually boiling some water in the pan. So, yeah. It actually reads a little bit high because the um, thermocouple is, the way I attached the thermocouple was I um, drilled a little hole into, kind of into the um, aluminum, not real deep, and then I um, JB welded it in, so it has good thermal contact, but since it's kind of close to the heating element, it's going to read a little bit higher than the actual temperature of whatever you're cooking, but that's okay because um, with the sugar rockets I plan to make in here, it's going to get hottest right on top of the heating element there, and I don't really, um, if I have the thermocouple in the middle, and it's set for like 100, or like 200 degrees, it's going to take a while for the thermal, um, it's not going to have a very good re thermal response, so it's going to, it might be like 300 degrees where the heating element is, but it takes a while for the heat to get to the middle, especially if you're boiling something, so, um, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I found this in the, in a creek. <laughs> So, um, and I just kind of uh, glued this um, box on there, and the um, terminals were all rusted off terribly. It was all terrible. So I um, kind of smashed the, um, or cut the heating element, um, steel casing, and ceramic back so that I could get good contact. And then I used a um, European-style um, connectors to... Um, or terminal strip to connect the wire on. And you might be thinking this wire is a little bit thin looking, which I thought that as well. I was originally going to use this wire because it looked really fat, and but actually these two wires had the exact same rating, and that was the highest rating I could find in my box of wires, which is quite big. But um, it's rated for 10 amps, and this thing pulls 1,100 watts, so it's going to pull about 10 amps, a little bit less. Um, and this wire is 18 gauge, even though it looks quite small. But um, And I went with this wire because it was actually rated for the highest temperature I could find, which is 105 degrees Celsius. So, 
but yeah, it's 18 gauge. Um, it says 10, 10 amps right there on this sticker, but um, it does get slightly warm after running for a while. But this one is also 18 gauge, but why it's so fat like this is it's shielded. It says right there, shielded. That's why it's so fat. <laughs> so, I would have used this if it was a little bit um, higher gauge, but it's also, it's still only 18 gauge. So it'd still get as hot. <laughs> Probably even hotter on the inside because it has all that extra um, stuff. So, but we could set the temperature a little bit lower here. Just set it for like 200. So it stopped boiling now. The one thing that I do wish I added, but I don't know if I'm going to add it or not, I still could add it, is a um, little indicator light to show when it's on. I'd probably like put it over here or something. But actually, it'd be more convenient if it was on here. I didn't think of that before I um, glued that all up. It would have been really nice to have a little light on there so I could tell when it was on. But Because um, it's just kind of hard to see this little LED there, the on indicator, when you're at an angle or something. So, But oh well. It will work good, so I'm quite happy with it. Other than that, and I probably should also add a um, um, a fuse or something just for safety. But maybe I could just add like a internal fuse like this or something. But oh well. Um, so yeah, tell me what you guys think. Um, that's about it. So now that it's getting nicer, I'll ho and I have this all set up. I should be able to start making some sugar rockets now. So. I'll do some experiments with that sometime when I get some time. So that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching.